Hello, this is David Green, Educational Director for R3 Stem Cell. Today's topic is amniotic fluid in regenerative medicine. So amniotic fluid in regenerative medicine, it sounds unusual to those who are unfamiliar with the benefits of amniotic fluid. Worldwide, amniotic fluid has been used hundreds of thousands of times for a variety of medical indications. It is truly remarkable the medicinal qualities that amniotic fluid contains and more continue to be discovered every few years. So amniotic fluid um, during pregnancy a fetus is surrounded by it and it serves to both protect the fetus and to aid in its growth. It's been used in medical treatments as far back as the 1930s. For example with wound healing they found that with not healing diabetic ulcers and things like that um, that amniotic fluid was amazing with helping these wounds to heal. Otherwise they just festered and oftentimes led to an amputation. So there are 10 beneficial qualities, um, one of which is that it's immunologically privileged. It does not cause a reaction when you inject amniotic fluid from one individual into an unrelated one. Now there are a high concentration of stem cells in amniotic fluid. Uh, much more so than anything you can get out of an adult's bone marrow. Um, and I put hybrid there because it really is, it's not embryonic stem cells and it's not quite adult stem cells. It's kind of a hybrid in between um, and it has a lot of the benefits of each but there's no ethical issues. It does contain hyaluronic acid which is the main component of medications like uh, Synvisc which are injected into arthritic knees and hips and um, it provides joint lubrication. We naturally have hyaluronic acid in our joints, so it has that as well. There's a full complement of growth factors in amniotic fluid. Um, it does have anti-inflammatory and anti-adhesion qualities. Now, anti-adhesion means anti-scar, so it's used for things such as uh, repairs around the spinal cord, um, around surgery that might need an implant, um, even like a breast implant, you know, scar tissue around those can be a problem. So these uh, amniotic fluid can prevent those types of scar. It's also antimicrobial. And this is only natural because the amniotic fluid prevents infection for the baby. So it also does that, you know, when it's used clinically. Uh, it's readily available after scheduled C-sections. You know, you, you hear people say that, well, amniotic fluid is harvested during an amniocentesis. Yeah, but that's not true for these types of usage as a biologic. Um, it's obtained after a scheduled C-section where normally you know, it's thrown away. There's no ethical concerns. There's no fetal tissue being utilized. Um, nothing involves the baby at all, just the fluid around it. Uh, these are not embryonic stem cells, like I mentioned, so there's no issues with that either. It's easy to administer. The, uh, once the tissue, the fluid is processed at an FDA-regulated lab, it's cryogenically frozen, um, and then prior to uh, use, it's uh, thawed out, um, and you don't have to harvest anything from uh, the, the hip or anything in the body. And number 10 is that it's been showing benefits for an immense number of medical conditions. Are there ethical concerns? No. As mentioned, the fetus is untouched. The placenta and amniotic fluid are normally discarded um, after birth. Donors are consented. They're uh, uh, compensated. Uh, there are no embryonic stem cells either in amniotic fluid. So we've come, you know, a full 180 from the days when you needed uh, fetal stem cells uh, to maintain uh, clinical effectiveness. So what are the potential medical indications? Well, it's being utilized for degenerative arthritis, also rheumatoid arthritis, because it does have some immunomodulatory effects. Degenerative disc disease, uh, soft tissue injuries such as tendinitis, tendinosis, small tendon tears, ligament injury, plantar fasciitis. It's been used a lot for non-healing wounds, crush injuries, uh, as mentioned, the adhesion barrier to prevent scar tissue, fracture healing, ophthalmology, limb salvage, um, and then also in the cosmetic and plastic surgery realms. Is amniotic fluid FDA approved? No, it's not. It's not disapproved either. It's not a drug, so therefore it doesn't have a label to have approval or denial. It's regulated as a biologic allograft according to the current good tissue practice regulations. Um, so that's how it's regulated by the FDA as a biologic, not as a drug. 
What are the outcomes with treatment? Well, I wish I had a whole list here to show you. Um, there is a significant amount of research on it for wound healing. For instance, a recent study in the Journal of Foot and Ankle Surgery showed a prospective study of 20 foot and ankle wounds that were non-healing. 90% of them were able to heal in three months and no amputations uh, occurred after that. Um, there are some smaller uh, studies for musculoskeletal, um, but there's nothing large right now. In a clinical review of stem cells from musculoskeletal conditions, that did not, this did not specifically focus on amniotic, um, but you know, mesenchymal stem cells in general, it did show application uh, and effectiveness for bone defects, uh, for spinal fusion, for cartilage lesions, you know, such as arthritis, um, and then tendon and ligament healing. Visit us online today at r3stemcell.com and then call us for more information and scheduling at 844-GET-STEM. R3 Stem Cell works with clinics nationwide who are using amniotic therapy to treat conditions such as mentioned here, which is of, to avoid a joint replacement for knee, hip, shoulder, ankle arthritis, along with soft tissue injuries such as ligament and tendon tears and athletes or overuse injuries such as plantar fasciitis and rotator cuff tendonitis. All these musculoskeletal conditions respond well to the treatment. However, there are not yet large scale studies with statistical significance to show. Alright, so give us a call today. Thank you very much for watching.